In this video, we are going to be working with properties in a Spring project. We are going to start by looking at how to work with these properties in XML by using a simple example and the property placeholder. Then we're going to be using multiple property placeholder elements and we're going to have a look at how to determine the order between them. We're then going to very quickly switch to a Java configuration and we're going to be looking at a basic example using the property source annotation. And then we're going to see why we need the property sources placeholder configurer. We need this bin and we're going to take a look at why that is. All right, so we're going to be starting with a test. We have here a very quick, simple test called properties with XML integration test. And this is pulling in a basic configuration. This is an XML config and let's have a quick look at that. So all this is doing is it's pulling in the foo properties with this property placeholder element. Now the foo properties is a very simple property file with, as you can see, just one single property. So it's pretty straightforward and this is pulling it in. So let's now see what the test is actually doing. First of all, we are injecting the environment here and we are also injecting a property here using the value annotation. So all pretty standard. Now let's see what the actual test is doing. It is writing out the injected property. This is the property we are injecting with the value annotation. And it's also getting that property from the environment. So we will immediately see how these two properties work. Is this enough to get the property injected via value? And then is it enough to get the property in the environment? So let's run it. Okay, so you can immediately see that the value annotation worked and we are indeed able to retrieve the property. The property has the value val and then the environment didn't work. We are getting a null when we pull this property out of the environment. And later on in the video, we will see why that is. All right, so now let's take a look at what happens if we define two property files in two separate XML configurations. So we have this XML configuration here, which is pulling in foo.properties. This is one property file. And we have a second XML configuration here, which is pulling in bar.properties. So a second property file. Now, both bar.properties as well as foo.properties are defining the same key, key something. So in foo.properties, we have the value set as val. And in bar.properties, we have the value set as val2. So let's now see when we run the test, which one of these is actually injected. So we can see that val is injected. So the property file that actually has priority here is this one, foo.properties. Now let's say we want to switch this out and we want to make sure that actually bar.properties has the priority here. So we can define this by setting the order and we're gonna set this as order equals one. So this is going to be the first order which will now take priority. So let's run the test again and let's make sure that the order actually works. And you can immediately see how val2 is now injected because we are setting this as a higher priority, as a higher order. Okay, let's now get rid of the order and let's actually change the key here and let's point this to key two. What happens now when we run the test? We are seeing that we are trying to inject key that something and this is not able to actually resolve but theoretically we should actually be able to resolve key that something because we still have key that something in foo that properties and we are still bringing in foo that properties inside the test so why aren't we able to resolve this well the reason as well as the actual fix for this problem are relatively straightforward. Spring basically tries to resolve this property out of these property files independently. So we need to make sure that either the property is actually present in both of these property files or this one is actually ignoring unresolvable properties. So now when an unresolvable property is searched for, the system will simply not throw the exception. So now let's try to run the test again. And here we go. The value is injected correctly. We are getting the val value here, which is good. And everything works smoothly. Okay, next we're gonna take a look at a very simple, similar type of test, which is simply injecting a property file and then simply tries to use it. 
and we're gonna do that with Java configuration. So you can see immediately that the test is now no longer injecting an XML config, it's injecting these basic properties Java configuration here. Let's take a look at that. This is again very, very simple, just a configuration class pulling in the full property file via this simple property source annotation. And we are doing the same thing. We are injecting the environment here and of course using it to just get the property uh, by the key. And then we are simply injecting the same property via the value annotation. So very similar to the previous test and let's see the results. Okay, you can immediately see now that the results are actually different from the XML test. So no longer are we able to inject this value annotation and we are no longer getting the resolved property value. However, we are able to pull the property straight from the environment. So things are a little bit different with the Java configuration and we will talk about why that is in a second. So the reason we are able to resolve this property out of the environment and we were not able to do that when we were working with XML, it's because the new property source annotation actually makes the property source here available to the Spring environment, which is why we are then able to retrieve the value out of the environment. Now, the reason value isn't working here is because we are missing a bin here. We will take a look at what that bin is a little bit later in the video and we will immediately, as soon as we define that bin, we will see the value annotation starting to resolve properties and you know, starting to work. Okay, so let's now see what this bin that we are missing actually is and let's see what defining this new bin will do in terms of actually helping us resolve properties from both the environment as well as value type of annotations. So as we mentioned in the very beginning, the bin is the property sources placeholder configurer and this is basically a bin that simply helps with the value annotation resolution. So now that this bin is configured, the value annotation goes directly against the environment. The environment already has the property. As we saw earlier, we were able to pull the property out of the environment. Now the value annotation is going to be able to do the same. It's going to be able to resolve the property out of the environment. So let's see how that works. And here we go. We have full resolution of properties both from value as well as from the environment. Thank you for watching. See you in the comments. And of course, if you'd like to get more tactical videos like this, go ahead and subscribe to the channel.